up to 30% of atrial fibrillation patients also have coronary artery disease, or CAD, with a significant proportion requiring percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI. The presence of CAD increases the risk of stroke, which is already elevated in patients with AF or flutter. An oral anticoagulant, or OAC, is indicated for the prevention of thrombotic events related to AF, whereas antiplatelet therapy is required for the prevention of coronary events after an acute coronary syndrome or after PCI. Each type of therapy offers a relative efficacy benefit. Dual antiplatelet therapy is more effective than OAC alone for prevention of coronary events post-PCI or after an acute coronary syndrome, but it is inferior to OAC for the prevention of thrombotic events in patients with AF or atrial flutter. As such, management of these patients requires a careful and balanced assessment of the individual risks of bleeding against the anticipated effects on thrombotic outcomes. The 2018 Atrial Fibrillation Guidelines were published in the November 2018 issue of the Canadian Journal of Cardiology and are an update to the 2016 AF Guidelines. This video will focus on the algorithm for the management of antithrombotic therapy in patients with AF and concomitant CAD. Patients with both AF and coronary artery disease or peripheral arterial disease may require a combination of oral anticoagulation to reduce the risk of AF-related stroke plus antiplatelet therapy to reduce the risk of ischemic coronary events. However, both of these therapies are individually associated with an increased risk of bleeding. Therefore, the CCS recommends that patients who have concomitant AF and coronary or arterial vascular disease, either peripheral vascular disease or aortic plaque, receive an antithrombotic therapy regimen that is based on a balanced assessment of their risk of AF-related stroke, ischemic coronary event, and clinically relevant bleeding associated with the use of antithrombotic agents. Shown on the left are the patient risk factors that are associated with an increased risk of bleeding. Shown on the right are factors that are associated with an increased risk of ischemic coronary outcomes, such as patient factors, clinical presentation, and angiographic factors. For patients requiring combinations of antiplatelet and OAC agents for concomitant AF and CAD or PAD, the CCS suggests that measures be employed to reduce the risk of bleeding. These include careful consideration of modifiable bleeding risk factors with vigorous efforts to mitigate them, consideration of proton pump inhibitor use, avoidance of prasugrel and ticagrelor in conjunction with OAC, avoidance of NSAIDs or other drugs that may increase bleeding risk, and strict blood pressure control. Whenever oral anticoagulation therapy is indicated in the presence of coronary or arterial vascular disease, the CCS suggests a NOAC in preference to warfarin. This suggestion for using a NOAC rather than warfarin places relatively greater weight on the ease of use of NOACs and on the data from RCTs of NOACs versus warfarin for nonvalvular AF. This algorithm outlines the decision pathway for the management of antithrombotic therapy in patients with concomitant AF and coronary artery disease or peripheral artery disease. Let's take a closer look at each step in the algorithm. Let's start with patients with stable CAD or PAD with concomitant nonvalvular atrial fibrillation or flutter. Stable CAD is defined by the absence of acute coronary syndrome for the preceding 12 months. The first step for these patients is to determine whether there is a low or high risk of stroke based on risk factors such as age and CHADS-2 score. For patients with non-valvular AF or flutter, aged less than 65 years, with no CHADS-2 risk factors, the CCS suggests no antithrombotic therapy for stroke prevention with management of their coronary or arterial vascular disease. The risk of stroke associated with AF is not sufficiently elevated to justify OAC therapy in these patients. Treatment should be directed at the underlying coronary arterial vascular disease. Therapeutic options include ASA 81 to 100 milligrams daily alone, or ASA plus either clopidogrel 75 milligrams daily 
Ticagrelor 60 mg twice daily or Rivaroxaban 2.5 mg twice daily. For patients with AF aged 65 years or older or with a CHADS-2 score of 1 or higher and with coronary or arterial vascular disease, the CCS recommends long-term therapy with OAC alone. OAC in these patients provides protection against both AF-related stroke and against ischemic coronary events. Evidence suggests that the addition of antiplatelet therapy to OAC therapy offers minimal beneficial effect on ischemic or thrombotic coronary outcomes while conferring an increased risk of bleeding over OAC alone. For patients with high-risk clinical or angiographic features for ischemic coronary outcomes who are at low risk of bleeding, some clinicians prefer a combination of an OAC with single antiplatelet therapy, either ASA or clopidogrel, instead of OAC alone. For patients with AF and stable coronary or arterial vascular disease, routine use of combination therapy was not justified, owing to the increased risk of bleeding without a significant reduction in ischemic coronary and cerebrovascular thrombotic events. Now let's consider patients with unstable CAD or PAD who are at higher risk of AF-related stroke. These patients require a combination of oral anticoagulation and antiplatelet therapy. The choice of antithrombotic regimen will depend on three clinical scenarios. One, the patient is scheduled for an elective PCI and is at low risk for thrombotic cardiovascular events. Two, the patient has an acute coronary event requiring an urgent PCI or is scheduled for an elective PCI but has high risk features for thrombotic CV events. Three, the patient has an acute coronary syndrome without the need for revascularization. Let's look at each of these three scenarios. For patients with AF undergoing elective PCI without high risk features for thrombotic events, the CCS suggests dual pathway therapy consisting of OAC plus clopidogrel 75 mg daily for at least one month after bare metal stent implantation and at least three months after drug eluting stent implantation. For some patients younger than 65 with a CHADS-2 score of 1 at the lower end of the stroke risk spectrum, some clinicians may prefer dual antiplatelet therapy instead of triple therapy consisting of an OAC plus dual antiplatelet therapy. For patients with AF aged 65 years or older with a CHADS-2 score of 1 or higher who either have an acute coronary syndrome with PCI or who are scheduled for an elective PCI with high-risk features for thrombotic CV events, the CCS recommends an initial regimen of triple antithrombotic therapy consisting of ASA 81 mg daily plus clopidogrel 75 mg daily plus an OAC for up to six months following PCI. After ASA discontinuation, which may occur as early as the day following PCI, the CCS suggests that dual pathway therapy consisting of an OAC plus clopidogrel 75 mg daily be continued for up to 12 months after PCI. A PCI is considered high risk for ischemic coronary outcomes based on the factors listed here. All patients should receive ASA at a dose of 81 mg or a minimum of 160 mg if they are ASA naive on the day of the PSI procedure. ASA may be continued as part of triple antithrombotic therapy for up to six months for patients with a high risk of thrombotic coronary events and low risk of bleeding. It can be discontinued as early as the day after PCI for patients with a low risk of thrombotic coronary events and a high risk of bleeding. For patients at intermediate risk of thrombotic coronary events and intermediate risk of bleeding, ASA can be continued as part of triple antithrombotic therapy for one month to three months. For patients with AF aged 65 years or older with a CHADS-2 score of one or higher who have an acute coronary syndrome who are not undergoing revascularization, the CCS suggests that dual pathway therapy consisting of an OAC plus clopidogrel 75 mg daily rather than prasugrel or ticagrelor be given without concomitant ASA for 12 months post-ACS.
For patients with AF and type 1 myocardial infarction who are not undergoing revascularization, the CCS AF Guidelines Committee places relatively greater emphasis on the reduction in ischemic coronary and cerebrovascular thrombotic events rather than the increase in bleeding observed with combination therapy. When combination therapy is used, the preference is for clopidogrel rather than ASA. Let's recap. In patients with AF and concomitant CAD or PAD, the choice of antithrombotic regimen should be based on a balanced assessment of a patient's risk of AF-related stroke, ischemic coronary event, and clinically relevant bleeding associated with the use of antithrombotic agents. Patients with AF and CAD are considered to be at high risk of stroke and should be treated with oral anticoagulation therapy if they are 65 and older or have a CHADS-2 score of 1 or higher. Most patients with an indication for OAC in the presence of CAD should receive a NOAC in preference to warfarin. AF patients undergoing elective PCI who do not present high-risk features for thrombotic events should receive dual pathway therapy consisting of OAC plus clopidogrel for at least one month after a bare metal stent implantation and at least three months for a drug-eluting stent implantation. AF patients at a higher risk of stroke undergoing PCI for an acute coronary syndrome or elective PCI with high-risk thrombotic features should receive an initial regimen of triple therapy consisting of oral anticoagulation therapy plus ASA plus clopidogrel for up to six months, followed by dual pathway therapy consisting of OAC plus clopidogrel for up to 12 months post-PCI. AF patients at higher risk of stroke in association with medically managed type 1 myocardial infarction should receive dual pathway therapy consisting of OAC plus clopidogrel rather than prasugrel or ticagrelor for 12 months post-ACS. Patients with stable vascular disease and non-valvular AF who have a high risk of stroke or systemic embolism should receive long-term therapy with OAC alone for the prevention of AF-related stroke. The need for ongoing anticoagulation should be based on the CHAD-65 algorithm. The full atrial fibrillation guidelines cover several additional topics beyond the management of antithrombotic therapy in patients with AF and CAD, including those listed here and many more. For more information and other topics related to the management of AF, visit the CCS's eGuidelines website. The eGuidelines site allows users to quickly browse, search, and filter the CCS's most sought-after guidelines. Thank you to the many volunteer experts who have contributed countless hours to atrial fibrillation guideline development and dissemination. 